The New York Knicks are off to a great start this season following last year's breakout. Today on The Void, let's get into the maturation of their young stars, starting with RJ Barrett on defense. RJ Barrett says his goal this season is to make an all defensive team and he's off to a good start. On opening night, he put the clamps on Jason Tatum down the stretch. At the end of the first overtime, the Celtics ISOed Tatum and Kemba Walker was shading towards the middle in case he went left. But Tatum attacked RJ's back foot to go baseline and then RJ made a great recovery to contest the shot. Keep in mind, this effort comes at the end of a first overtime when teams usually have tired legs. And then he did it again. In the final minute of the second overtime, RJ and Tatum danced again with Barrett mirroring every movement to force a tough shot in the paint. One more on-ball clip from earlier in the game, Barrett's responsibility on this play is to help inside the paint to prevent a lob to Robert Williams, but this leaves Tatum open in the corner. As soon as Marcus Smart begins his pass toward Tatum, RJ makes a quick closeout, then positions his feet to try to steer Tatum toward the baseline. Tatum swings the ball in that direction to make Barrett think he's going that way, but then he goes left anyway. And RJ recovers again nicely to make a strong contest on that shot. Off-ball defense was Barrett's weakness in the past, but he's improved. Against Embiid, the Knicks often showed help, which forces a pass here and gets the Knicks into a rotation. RJ's underneath the rim against Niang, and the ball is going to find Danny Green in the corner. So keep your eyes on RJ as the play resumes now. Take note of the hustle and the angle he takes to contest the shot. This is simple, but effective. Overall, RJ's done a good job of staying attentive and staying active by putting his hands in the passing lanes to cause steals and deflections. Making an all-defensive team is a tough task, but he at least deserves to be in mind for consideration. Despite playing in New York, Barrett has sort of been overlooked compared to guys drafted ahead of him, Zion and Ja Morant. And that's okay. Zion is a star, albeit an injury-prone one, and Ja is becoming a special talent for the Grizzlies. But that shouldn't take anything away from RJ. Last season, we made a video breaking down Barrett's improvement on offense by talking with his trainer Drew Hanlon and now RJ appears to be making strides on defense. If he can become a stopper that can help complete this team which was already really good on defense last season with Julius Randle getting much better under Tom Thibodeau and this season now you get Obi Toppin making strides on defense. Now it's becoming a team without really any weak links. Even with Kemba Walker he's small but at least he hustles and always plays hard. And then there's an important development happening here with Mitchell Robinson. If he stays healthy, this dude has always had nasty moments and now he's becoming more disciplined. This is a simple play, but it sums up Mitchell Robinson's development. The Sixers run a high pick and roll and Robinson perfectly plays the middle, protecting against both a pass to Embiid while still contesting the shot. Let's see that one more time here. Nothing flashy, but this is the type of positioning he struggled with when he first came into the NBA. Robinson has gotten stronger to battle on the post, fight inside, and I think we're going to see a lot more blocks and shot alterations as a result of good positioning and not just his insane athleticism. And that's another element that can help the Knicks take steps forward as a franchise. The Knicks still aren't championship contenders, but the progress of these young guys helps them get closer, and so do some of the changes on offense. Even aside from the new additions over the offseason, it's more so to do with what's happening with their three-point rate. Last season, New York ranked 24th in three-point rate, and now they're all the way up to fourth in the entire league. The Knicks have way more shooters now, and they're using them. And you got to give credit to Tibbs for this tweak, because in the past... I mean, Tibbs was criticized for being stubborn for good reason. He had an unwillingness to involve when he was with Minnesota, when he was with Chicago. And this is a sign that now Tibbs can change, which is important for any head coach you have. I can't help but wonder what the next move is for the Knicks. They're one star away from being a tier above what they are now, and maybe just two or three moves away from becoming a serious contender. Is it Damian Lillard or Bradley Beal? Is trading a bunch of young guys for a megastar really the right move? The Knicks don't have great salaries to even match for a max player so i don't really know the answer here the best move could actually just be patience waiting until next off season when dame could maybe force a trade somewhere or beal and zach levine are going to become free agents or maybe it's waiting even longer than that for the next crop of guys to become available it's hard to predict because a lot of teams like the knicks are in good spots right now and that's because there are so many great young talents around the nba like rj barrett like Obi Toppin, like Mitchell Robinson. And for Knicks fans, 
It's okay, despite how good everything is right now, to think about the future. It's only natural to think about what the next step this team could take is actually gonna be. But right now though, things are good. And the Knicks are building one of the strongest foundations in the entire league. At some point though, that big move has just gotta happen. Thank you for watching today's episode of The Void. Please be sure to subscribe to The Ringer. We have great videos every day, and The Void will be back every single Thursday. Thank you again. I hope you have a fun rest of your day.